there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got a lot of fun DIY home decor goodness for you today I'm joining in with a sweet friend of mine I can't wait to share that with you a little bit later so what are we waiting for let's get started today we'll be working on some rustic farmhouse Christmas crafts so let's get started with project number one for this project, I do have a hand-drawn free printable for you. It comes two sheets total, of course. I've got a top pattern that's the top of the head, which is labeled A, and the bottom, which is the bottom of the head labeled B. And then what you're going to do is cut those out, and at the dotted line, you're going to tape it together to make your pattern, which is about 12 inches tall. And then I've got one nose piece you'll cut out, and I just drew it here so you know kind of obviously where the nose goes. So this is what it looks like once it's cut out and taped. Everything's whimsical. The ears don't match. The nose is off shape and I did that on purpose. And so what you're going to do, I'm using this felt I got from Hobby Lobby. You're going to want it double layered because you want two pieces for the head here. And then you're going to want one piece of fabric for the nose. So I'm just pinning it on to my fabric pieces here. And then we'll get those cut out. Now this pattern, I saw about four of them on Pinterest. But I didn't like each one by itself. So I was like, I like kind of how the ears are on that one. But of course I made mine a little more whimsical. I like the nose shape off this one. So I kind of was inspired by four of them like I said and then just drew my own pattern shape for this and I like how it came out I just think it's so super cute I think it's one of my favorites this year for you know a project just kind of out of the blue you know let's make this thing up so go ahead and get this cut out now you can use any felt you want I like this color um, because you, it's easily stainable and we can darken it and make it how we want it this is what it'll look like once everything's cut up now of course you can use hot glue gun or beacon fabri-tac glue for this of course I will use my fabri-tac and sewing machine we're going to have some little eyes here um, and make some little eyebrows of course on this area first and get our nose on so take your top piece of felt we're gonna sew our little nose on here and what I'm doing is I want my nose to look a little puffier so I'm just taking an extra piece of that felt cutting it out with the pattern and then I cut it a little smaller to fit the back so it kind of just makes it a little more dimensional um, for the antlers this is just some decorative sticks I bought probably six years ago at Hobby Lobby you of course can get sticks out of the backyard I've cut them to the size I want probably about eight inches and then for the eyes I'm going to use some buttons here that I've already painted black and then this is some black crochet string you can pick this up at Walmart it's like two or three dollars Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I want to stain it up. So this is just some leftover coffee and vanilla in a spray bottle. And I'm going to start spraying it on both my pieces. And then I have trouble with my sprayer, so I'm going to move it to a new sprayer. I've been having trouble with the sprayer long, so I'm not even going to try to clean it. Just put it to a new sprayer and spritz on as much as we want to kind of stain it up just a little bit. And then once that's dry, I'm going to come in with this ink you can get scrapbooking section, Ranger Distress Oxide Vintage Photo Ink with my little inker that slips on my finger. And I'm just going to ink around the edges. Give us a little bit of shading here around our pieces where we're going to put the eyes. And then I'm going to lay the nose on here in just a minute. Here we go. And I'm going to shade around that just to, like I said, give us that little bit of dimension as if we were just painting it, right? Here's how both pieces look all shaded up and stained. And I'm going to add a little bit of that ink to the nose as well. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and glue our little batting piece on the back of our fabric. And then go ahead and glue that down in the nose area. Wonderful. So take some of that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is take some of that crochet string and thread it through the holes of the buttons. And then once I get that done on both of them, I'm just going to kind of make a couple of knots on the back of the buttons. We're going to go ahead and just glue these buttons on. Of course, I will cut off the excess thread there. Don't want that hanging off. Perfect. Make it easy. Already do a little sewing. We don't need to do the eyes. <laughs> And then go ahead and I'm going to use this yarn darn needles. You get yarn darn, yarn darn, yarn darner needles you can get at Walmart, like a couple bucks. And I'm going to add a nice long piece of crochet string on here. I'm going to tie a little knot at the end. I'm going to go a little slower on this in case those of you who haven't sewn before. All right, and I'm going to come through the back side of our 
fabric piece. You can see here coming through the back side at the edge of the nose, about maybe a quarter inch in. I'm going to pull it all the way through to the knot. You can see here. And then I'm just going to come out past the nose, maybe a little quarter of an inch, and put it back through that fabric to the back side, just like that. We're going to make a little fun stitch. And I'm going to come from the back side through the front, again, still on the nose, pull it all the way through, come out past the nose a little bit, and poke that needle through to the back side of the fabric. So we're coming back to front, pulling it all the way through, and then front to back, pulling it all the way through, just like this. Again, we're going to come back to the front. And you don't have to do this. This is just decorative, but I think it adds cuteness. And then front to the back, just like that. And we're going to do this process all the way around. So here I am coming at the last stitch here going through the back side. And once we get there, I'm just gonna kinda come through the stitch before that, just to pull it through a little bit, couple times, so we and make a little loop here, and then just bring our needle through that loop and tie a little knot. I bring it through the loop two or three times, pull it and tie a little knot there and cut off the excess. Perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and glue our eyes on. And I'm just going to glue my little eyes a little fun. I want one a little higher, one a little lower. And then I've got some string, crochet string on my yarn darner needle again. And I'm going to come down about a half inch away from the eye, coming in back from the back side again, just like when we stitched the nose. And pull it all the way through the knot. And then I'm going to go up probably about two inches long. And I'm going to make one great big stitch, just like we did the nose, around the nose, okay? And then I'm going to come from the other side. Back to front and front to back. I'm going to make this one a little bit longer than the other one, probably about two and a quarter inches long. Make them kind of slanted and fun. See how that looks. And then once I get there, I'm just going to make a little knot right at the end, just like that, and cut off the excess. Really easy, and our eyebrows gives us a lot of personality. And then I'm going to come back in with just a little more ink and shade around the eyes and the ears just a little bit more and around that nose around the eyebrows. And if you're a gluer, you're gonna glue between your two pieces of felt all the way around, leaving this top edge open, the top of the head open, okay? If you're a sewer, of course, take it to your sewing machine. You're going to sew all the way around your little uh, head here, leaving that top edge open for some stuffing. So super cute, I just love it. You'll, of course, have to let me know what you think of this project down below. Let me know if you're going to make it. Show you a little bit of the sewing process, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're done sewing right here. You can see it's sewn all the way around, just like this, and that top edge is open. There's no sewing on it. Okay? Now what you're going to do, of course, you're going to come in, and you are going to stuff this little guy. And I, what I did is I stuffed the little ears first and made them really, really, really super tight because I don't want them to bend at all. I want them really stiff. I mean, those are, you, you can't even imagine how much stuffing I got in those ears. And then go ahead and stuff the rest of the body all up. But it was easier for me to kind of stuff the ears first so I can get them nice and tight so they don't move. So this is what it looks like. I mean, it's so cute like it is. I know, right? I love it. I love it. So what I've done here, and I'll show you a picture, I've marked two little spots. I put my sticks in and I marked two little spots right around the width of the stick. So you can see here, I've circled it so that I know where my sticks are going to go and where I do not want to glue. So if you're a gluer, I would glue your stick in first, one stick, and then glue to the left of that and that little opening and all the way across. And then I would glue your other stick in and then glue that other little opening and pinch it closed. Okay, if you're a sewer, you do the same thing. You're going to sew in that little spot, leave the opening for your stick, sew across the middle of the head, leave the opening for the stick, and sew that other little spot. It is a little bit tedious in there, but it can be done. This is what it looks like, and I've kind of opened those little holes up a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to add some glue in the hole, and then a little bit of glue on the stick. Okay, and then shove it in the hole. 
perfect. And then I'm going to pull the felt up around it and pinch it closed together. All right, and do the same thing with the other stick. I'm kind of opening up the hole a little bit there again. Add some glue in the hole and then around the stick. I, yeah, I was all set to go outside and get sticks, and I was like, those decorative sticks, so I didn't have to go out in the cold. <laughs> Pinch it up and around, and our little antlers are in. So now we're going to go ahead and add just some greenery. I've got some different greenery here, some twine from Dollar Tree. You can use any greenery you want. I like the snowy greenery. I'm only going to put on one ear. Got some rusty wire here. I've curled around the paintbrush. Get it nice and curly. I'll have a link down below to the rusty wire, the rusty stars, and the rusty bells I use on all my projects today. Adding some um, pine cones there, and then I've got these clickable stamps from Michaels. I'll put the link in the description box down below. And, of course, some VersaFine ink that I like to use onto a little strip of torn fabric. Ink that up a little bit, and I'm just going to lay it here to see where it's going to be, and then I'm going to tuck in some beaded berries I get from Hobby Lobby that I love. So whatever you want to put here and in a little twine bow, I'm going to tuck that in right between those beaded berries. And then these rusty stars, I'm going to use my crocodile and punch a hole in the top of each one. I'll do that through all my projects today. Been loving these rusty stars. Set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and glue on my little Rudolph tag here. And then the rusty bell right at the top of that tag. Perfect. And then our stars, I'm going to go ahead and thread through the twine near the bottom. Figure out how long I want my twine. And once I do that, I'll tie a little knot at the end and cut off the excess. Don't want our little stars to fall off. I'll get one done here and then get the other one done, of course. The one on the right is a lot shorter than one on the left. And I it's probably going to look a little funny, but I think it turns out cute the way I'm going to glue them. So once those are on, I'm going to set it to the side. I'm going to use this Distress Oxide ink in Worn Lipstick, and I'm making really long, cute pink cheeks. All right, it's a little bit bright, so I'm going to just take a scrap piece of felt here and just kind of rub it in a little bit more and tone it down. You could use some blush, you know, from your makeup or whatever, or watered down really light pink paint would work and then I'm going to come back in once that's all done and I'm going to glue down my twine wherever I want it to kind of wrinkle and crinkle down our Rudolph here and then I'm going to glue my star into place I know one's coming up and over the eyes it might look a little funny right now but in the end you'll see how it all comes together it'll look really cute and I just like to glue my twine into place just so it's where I want it to be glue down the other one and then off camera I'm going to use this spray glitter I get from Walmart I'll spray it and once that's all dry I'm going to bring it back in here and I'm going to use this spray adhesive and in this little spice glitter mixture it's like pumpkin spice I poured in I'm going to use this distress rock candy glitter and I'll put as much in as I want and stir it until I see the glitter kind of pop up through the spice. I had to get this online. I got it at eBay. Some of you might be able to find it in your scrap stores. It's by Ranger Distress Rock Candy. And it's a perfectly clear, clear glitter, no iridescence to it. And so then what I do is I just spray my adhesive on where I want it to be. And then I bring in that pumpkin spice glitter mixture after I get off some lint, <laughs> and I sprinkle that on, and I turn it over and kind of tap off the excess. I'll do a little bit on the nose here, get it in all the places that I want it to be. So, so cute. And then once I do that, this project is complete.
So let's see who I'm collaborating with today. <laughs> I know you all are excited. Today I'm teaming up with my sweet friend Tracy, who is Country Charm by Tracy here on YouTube, and we are bringing you tons of Christmas crafting inspiration. Now, Tracy's channel is filled with beautiful country rustic crafts for your home decor. We have similar crafting styles, which, you know, kind of brought our friendship together, and we just love collaborating together, and we know we get lots of comments from you all when we do collaborate together that you love it as well. If you aren't familiar, you were Tracy she has such a talent for adding all this rustic goodness in her projects which brings so much beauty to the details and makes her country style DIYs just shine now Tracy is always encouraging you to craft and shows you step by step how to elevate your style her DIYs are unique and well quite charming I'm blessed to have her as my friend now if so, so blessed to have her as my friend. Now, Chasey's channel and video link will be in my description box. So make sure you go check out all the inspiration that she has for you today. With that said, let's move on to project number two. For this project, again, another free printable for you. I've just got a hand-drawn stocking here. I just made it a fun, whimsical shape. For the main stocking, you're going to cut two of fabric of your choice and for the cuff of the stocking cut two of batting or felt would work wonderful so here i've got two pieces already cut out this is fabric i picked up at hobby lobby and in the batting here is just batting that you can cut off by the yard of the bolt at walmart and you can use Fabri-Tac glue, hot glue gun for this if you'd like, or sewing machine. You're just going to lay your cuff on top. You could leave it like that, but what I want to do is kind of fold down that top edge, but you could just leave it a straight edge if you want. Okay, so I'm going to kind of fold down. I'm going to actually glue this part here. So let's move on to that. You're going to lay it down here. I'm going to turn this over so you can see it. And then you've got a little bit of that batting showing on the back side. And just add a little bit of your glue here. I'm going to lay this one up here so I get the exact same height on both of them. Get them both lined up. Perfect. And we'll go to this one, and we're just going to fold it down on the inside of the stocking. I know it's hard to tell on this fabric, but... Um, and then flip that stocking over or up, and then add glue to the rest of the cuff there. And then bring that stocking back down, making sure it's kind of folded at the top, and then just pat it down and glue it. You're going to do the same to both sides little bit of glue to the cuff to roll it up at the top and then add glue to the rest of the cuff and lay your fabric back down over the top and then put the two pieces together and again you don't have to do that you can leave a straight edge if you're a gluer just glue all the way around your stocking now around that edge in between your fabric pieces leaving that top cuff open if you're a sewer what I want to do on mine is I've decided I kind of want to before I sew the two stockings together, I want to go ahead and just add a little bit of sewing detail down at the end of the cuff here. This is optional. I'm going to do it on both sides. Show you here what it looks like. Just like that. Just that little bit of sewing detail. And then I'm going to put them both together and sew around the edges of the entire stocking. Again, leaving the opening up at the cuff part. All right? I thought this was just a fun, I just wanted a fun shape for this. I don't know. So I kind of made it fun. And, you know, if you don't like mine, you can totally draw your own. I just hand drew it. I just went in and went boop, 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 and hand drew my stocking. It was that easy. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> anyway, let's get the rest of this sewn up. I know you like the sound effects, right? Okay, once the sewing is complete, of course, you're going to go in and you're going to stuff your stocking and stuff it about three quarters of the way up. You don't need it all the way stuffed. We want to save a little room for greenery here. I'm trying to get it, I like mine stuffed really tight. I'm trying to get that down in there. I think I grab a ruler here and get that stuffed in there as good as you can. And as you can see, we're leaving our outer edges all open on our stocking. And you can see here how much stuffing I have in here, although it's not quite enough. I'll add some more later. I'm using this greenery from Dollar Tree. Use whatever you want. I think that's a really neat greenery. And I got this from Joanne's this Bloom Collection, $2.99, but it was half off. So I got it for $1.50, picked up a few of those. This is well from Joanne's, again, half off. It was $12.99, so I got it for six bucks. A nice big bundle. And this twine from Dollar Tree that I love 
And then I'm also kind of bringing in my favorite beaded berries from Hobby Lobby. So I start to go to glue in this greenery here, just adding you know, Beacon Fabri-Tac glue all at the end and decided that's going to sit down too far. So I'm going to bring in and add a little more stuffing and then go ahead and put this in. And just put these in however you like it. I'm trying to put kind of the taller pieces of greenery at the back. Uh, on both sides of the stocking here and adding kind of the thicker, you know, snowier pieces at the front, just however you like it to look like, kind of spreading it apart, making it look nice. Perfect, bringing in some more snowy stuff and then bringing in this for a little bit more red tone here. I like this one from Joann's because the berries don't fall off as bad. And then I'm going to bring in some of the beaded berries here from Hobby Lobby. Just a little bit on both sides. Again, arrange how you like it. I'm not a fantastic arranger. Now for this part, you can certainly use these uh, candy canes from Dollar Tree, right? But I'm going to just use some pipe cleaners here and twist and kind of make my own because we want the stocking to, you know, I want it anyway, to look a little bit more primitive. That's why when I sewed it, I left the seams hanging out and everything like that. So just making this into, once it's twisted together into my candy cane shape, and at the bottom, just kind of twisting that together to give me a little gluing space and then I'm going to take that vintage photo ink and I'm going to ink it up a little bit. I made it nice and thick at the bottom and brought up that excess and twisted it so it gives us a lot of gluing surface. I'll use my spray adhesive here and bring in my little mixture here of the spice and the glitter. Gives us that little bit of a primitive look. Perfect. This is what it looks like. Got it. And then Add some glue down on our little gluing area there and stuff that into the right side of the stocking or wherever you want to stuff it. Add a long uh, tail bow here with that twine and I'm going to add in some of my um, metal stars again that I like. Doing just the same like in the first project. Figuring out how long I want those and then I will tie a knot at the end so they don't fall off and cut off the excess again. Both of them. I'm liking doing this for some reason this season, adding the stars. I'm going to go ahead and glue in that twine bow at the top. And then I want to go ahead and ink up the stocking a little bit more. And I'll ink it up front and back. I just kind of show the front here. And then I'm going to come in and just glue those long tails into place. Because I want them to look kind of crinkly and wrinkly. And so I like to just glue them exactly where I want them to lay. Add a little glue on the middle star. And I'll come down the other side and do the same thing. Just adding in that crinkle. I love how the stocking turned out. And really all in all, about an hour and it was done. Probably a little less. Than, if I was, And that's because it's the first one. It was my prototype. Now I could probably go in and make them in within like half an hour. Really easy since I have the pattern down. Now I'm adding, uh, gluing in a little rusty jingle bell at the top. I'm going to spray glitter this off camera. And then once that's done, I'll bring it back in here. Um, and we'll come in and go ahead and add our adhesive and our little bit of spice mixture here just to kind of finish up that primitive look for us. I think this just turned out so super cute. Those of you that like love to make wreaths and stuff, it would be cute. You could add a little twine hanger at the back of the greenery and add it to the center of a wreath. These would be fun even to make maybe a little bit more miniature and you can make them more like into ornaments. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. Once I get all this on and the spice on, that makes this project complete.
Let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I'm featuring this wood kit with my good friend Kim, whose website is craftingwithkimber.com. We've got this gingerbread kit for you. It comes with all these pieces. This gingerbread is about, oh, 12 inches tall and everything beautiful thick wood it comes with your cho you get it all but you could use a choice of like the spoon with the heart or you could make these into peppermint sticks with the cute little tag and you know the size heart you want whatever you want she's just giving you a lot of choices if you want to use hearts for cheeks the buttons the little squiggles it's all there for you i love this because it's really thick wood the base of the gingerbread man and so it can stand up on its own again link will be in my description box before i start painting what i've done is i've traced the back side of the gingerbread man and I cut it about an eighth of an inch short all the way around and then I traced the front of the gingerbread man and I cut that short about a quarter inch all the way around all right and I'm going to set that aside now I'm going to start painting with this Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth all my pieces here and I'm just going around the edges on the front and back of this because we're going to cover the whole center up. Now for my project today, I am choosing to use some felt that I get at Hobby Lobby, but you can certainly just paint yours. You might want to just use scrapbook paper for the whole thing. It's your choice. And I love the set. I love that Kim gave you options of, you know, different hearts. She gave you options if you want to use the spoon in the heart or the cute little peppermint sticks. I'll be using the spoon in the heart uh, for this one. And it just turned out so cute. I can't wait to share this whole thing with you. So once I get the front and back covered, I'm going to go on and, you know, go ahead and paint the squiggles for now. And then off camera, I'll show you in just a minute, I do the spoon and the little heart. And I'm trying to be really careful when I paint here not to get paint along the sides. I'm just trying to go really slow and flat on top so I don't have to worry about, you know, painting the sides or anything because they're already stained nice and dark. So here's the spoon. I just used this Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water and gave it a little stain front and back. And then the heart, I just used the same Dixie Belle chalk paint brand in Barn Red. Now I'm coming in and I just want to sand around the edges of all my pieces. I'll just show a little bit here. So sanding the heart, the spoon, the gingerbread man, and I'll sand those little squiggles as well uh, off camera just to give it a little bit of a rustic look. And this will look nice if you're just painting your whole thing if you just want to use nothing but paint it'll really give it that nice farmhouse look as well and you could sand it and distress it even more than what i am doing so here's my pattern piece for the front i showed you earlier and i cut it out of a piece of felt now you can elect to use just one piece of felt on the front okay i've decided to use two and of course i'll show you why in just a minute so I've got two pieces of felt for the front and then I've got one piece just cut for the back just to cover it up and make it look nice. So my plan on this is I wanted it to look kind of stuffed but not the way I normally do it. You all know I'll normally lay like a little bit of white like a felt down and then you know kind of push the edges of the fabric around the top and make it look a little quilted. But the thing you want to remember when you go to stuff this I want my belly to look real poofy but where the arms and legs are you want it really really thin so that the squiggle once we get it glued on there, it can lay nice and flat. You don't want it so puffy, it kind of looks funny, and I'll show you that in a minute. So here's what it looks like. You can see the belly's nice and thick, and the head, arms, and legs are all really, really thin. I, I don't want it really poofy. I just want it a tiny poofy, but I want a big puffy belly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue all of this into place. Perfect. And then once... Um, everything is down here. I will show you. It's real easy if you're a gluer and you can use uh, hot glue or Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. Get my big poofy belly in position there. Um, put both your pieces together if this is the route you're going and then just take your glue and between the two pieces of fabric around the edge you're just going to glue all the way around and then just you know pinch it all together and that's it. I'm taking mine to the sewing machine just to give it that little bit of a country charm and that stitching that y'all know I love to do. Yeah, I just wanted it puffy because, like I said, a lot of times I'll show you on my projects where I'll put felt down, fabric over the top, and kind of push the fabric around the felt and make it look quilted. But this I wanted it to look puffy, you know. So this is what we've got here, all puffy and ready to go. Everything's sewn, looks super cute. And plus being really thin, um, I'm going to go ahead and glue the back side on here. Plus being really thin uh, for the front, it won't look like it's... It'll, it'll look like one unit when we glue it against the wood, okay? It won't look like a puffy thing sitting on top of wood. So I'm taking 
coffee, just leftover coffee with vanilla in it. I'm spraying my front piece to give it some staining. I've already stained the back if you look to the right there. And then I'm using my Distress Oxide ink and Vintage Photo and I'm just shadowing around the edges just so it'll kind of elevate it up off of that wood a little bit, even though I know I said I don't want it to look up off the wood, but you want it to look shadowed, right? So I've got my glue here for the front and I'm gonna press it all the way down. See, we wanna press it nice and flat so it looks like one unit with the wood. Okay, I think it looks so cute. Here's a spoon, I'm gonna go ahead and I've got some paper to cover front and back and I've used my sewing machine to sew around those as well off camera. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the front and the back uh, papers here. This music paper I got at Hobby Lobby. I'm doing the backside too because the back will show a little bit, you know, when I glue the spoon to, you know, one little hand on the front. So I want the back finished off. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the paper on the heart and then we'll just uh, set that aside for a little bit. Okay, now I'm coming in and gluing my squiggles down here. They're just laying down. That's why you've got it nice flat. I'm pressing it nice and tight. Okay, I'll get both of the little squiggles on the arms done first because I want those to set up. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some of those clamps from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna clamp those things down. They didn't break or anything and clamp them and let it sit so it's nice and tight. And then once those are ready, I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Add my glue to the cute little squiggles and then go ahead and clamp those down. Perfect. And I maybe clamp them for about 10 minutes each. All right, so once that is all done, I've got some buttons here. I've already painted them in black. The little buttons came with the kit and I'm gonna use two pieces of like just crochet uh, ribbon like or crochet string like we did used on our Rudolph, right? And I'm just gonna tie it in little knots on the back side on all three buttons, make it nice and easy. Get that on there. This is such a cute kit. You guys really need, check out that link in the description box. You need to go get yourself a kit. And I wanna go ahead and sand around the buttons a little bit. Very reasonable price and she gets that out nice and quickly. Here's all the different pieces I'm gonna use today. Just kind of what we've been using on our other two projects today. Some greenery and some ripped fabric and a little tag I've sewn, jingle bells, rusty stars, that kind of thing. Again, I'll have links, did I say that earlier? I'll have links to all the rusty elements I use in my description box from Factory Direct Crafts. I'm gonna go ahead and place down some greenery here. And I've made a bow out of that ripped fabric there. And this greenery, I get my greenery from Hobby Lobby and Joann's and Dollar Tree, of course. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and glue my little fabric bow on. I'm trying to decide where I want that greenery and move it back down. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm going to add a little, you know, sugary pine cone at the top and add in my favorite, you know, beaded berries from Hobby Lobby. Perfect. And I'll add in the little rusty star. I want to add a little rust up here because I want to go ahead and add it some rusty bells uh, here in a minute as well. And we're going to go ahead and glue down our little buttons. Love it. So easy to put together. And uh, yeah, this one's just staying in my decor. I love it. I'm going to go ahead and glue the heart onto the spoon. I'm going to figure out where I want it to lay. I'm going to kind of move it over to the left edge. And we're going to take that twine. Got it kind of in a bow here and figuring out where I want stuff. I'm going to put some rusty bells at the bottom and that's why I put the rusty star at the top. So now I've got like a little trio of rusty things, right? Star at the top, bells at the bottom. Go ahead and glue down that twine and I'm going to ink up our little uh, tag here and use those Michael's clickable stamps and spell the word sweet, you know, sweet gingerbread, right? We'll go ahead and glue that on in the middle of that twine bow and I'm going to add a red bell. Those came from Dollar Tree, the red bells. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot at the end of my twine so that our little cute rusty bells don't fall off. And adjust the tails of my fabric bow here as well. Want those just a little bit shorter. And then we'll just start kind of, you know, gluing down, wrinkling and crinkling, as I like to say. You all should be able to say that with me now. <laughs> gluing down our uh, fabric bow and our twine so everything just stays in place exactly how I want it to be. 
I know we've done this a few times already, but you know, you see the process, you get used to it, and then you can do it yourself. Adjust this side as well. Then we'll go ahead and get everything down on this side. So it mimics what we did on the left side a little bit, but still has its own personality. Glue our twine down and make sure we get our bell just in the exact spot we want it. Perfect, and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue down our spoon here. Perfect, love it, love the spoon. And here I've off camera made some little eyes out of that Crayola Airbait clay you can get from Walmart. I just formed them in the little balls and kind of just touched them together and let them dry and then I painted them black, nice and easy. Glue those on and I'm gonna use this Distress Oxide ink and worn lipstick with my little round sponge and make some cute little cheeks. Again, you can use blush. From your makeup and then I'm gonna bring out the spray glitter you knew I was gonna do it right <laughs> spray the front I spray the back off camera I like to do the spray glitter first and then I come in as per usual with all our projects today with the spray adhesive in certain areas and our little uh, spice glitter mixture and get that into the areas I want it's so hard not to put this everywhere but you know you be careful with it three or four spots because it can become too much believe it or not once I get this stuff on that makes this project complete so I hope you like all three projects that I came up with today leave me a comment down below and I know it's going to be difficult because I am having difficulty myself but let me know which project was your favorite at first I'm like Rudolph that's it hands down and then I got to the stocking like oh but that's cute and then I got to the gingerbread I'm like oh no I really like that one so I don't know curious to see what you all think please give this video a thumbs up because it really 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 helps to get my channel out there and get it to grow if you're walked in here for the first time, or maybe you came over from Tracy's channel, welcome! You're checking things out. You really digging what you saw today. Make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another project from me. I, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tracy, for collaborating with me today. It's always, always a sweet treasure to my heart to join with you to bring lots of fun crafting inspiration. Everybody, I will have the link again to Tracy's video and channel in my description box. And also remember for that gingerbread, I will have the link to craftingwithkimber.com. You can go get a kit for yourself. Run, don't walk. <laughs> Before I go, I want to share with you one final thought. God loves those who serve Him, He loves those who love Him, and He loves those who trust in Him, those who trust in what He has to offer you. He is your river of life flowing from His heavenly throne. His mercy and grace flow from the heavenly lights. He is the great I Am. He cares for you. I can't say that enough. He honestly cares about you. He cares about who you are and what you do. He cares that you hurt or cry. He delights when you are happy and laughing. He has joy in his heart for your life because you are his. He chose you from the very beginning. He placed you in this time. He placed you where you were at. He placed you among all the people you were around. He placed you in the neighborhood you live. He placed you in the job you work. Realize he has done this because you are made for this moment in time. He has plans for your life no matter what age you are or where your thoughts lie. You must simply know and understand that he offers you hope, peace, love, healing, grace, joy, mercy, forgiveness, all the days of your life. Accept him for who he is. Accept what he has for your life. Accept the fact that he has a plan to help you win the race set before you. Humble yourself before him. Acknowledge him. Adore him. He will never harm you. He will give you a future. His ways can be your way if you'd only allow your heart to receive. Allow your heart to be open. Allow your eyes to see and your ears to hear. Know that He will always be by your side. He will never forsake you. He believes in you. You are His child. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.